What's up guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to solve a system of equations by using the substitution method. And we're going to do that by going through five examples that I have hand selected for this process. I hope you enjoy. I am going to start off by actually solving this inequality by using uh, substitution. And the reason why I'm going to use substitution is, or basically what I'm going to do is give you guys a problem of you know what we're doing with substitution. And basically if you guys look at this, Basically what substitution is, is you're substituting in a value, in your value for your variable. And very similar, if you guys remember, if we had an e equation, let's say a equals 3 and b equals 5. Forget about this problem for a second. And I gave you the equation 2a minus 3b. And I say evaluate. What kind of, what kind of problems okay. are these? All right, so I'm saying a equals 3 and b equals 5. All right, and if I say evaluate, find the value of this expression, what do you do with the value of 3? Plug it in for a. What do you do with the value of 5? Plug it in. So I'd have 2 times 3 minus 3 times 5. Does everybody see that? Then that becomes 6 minus 15, negative 9. So negative 9 is the value over there. Does that make sense? Yes, OK, very good. So now, ladies and gentlemen, what we have. Can I erase that? Yes, absolutely. So now, the equation that I'm going to go over is a plus 3b equals 4. And they say a equals negative 2. So what can I plug negative 2 in for? a into the other equation. So that's what I'm basically doing. I'm evaluating the other expression in for a. So I plug in negative 2 in for a plus 3b equals 4. Now I solve for my variable b. I add 2. 3b equals 6. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. b equals 2. Now. The difference with this, though, in just evaluating, we're not just evaluating equations. If you guys remember, systems of equations were two lines. Remember when we graphed them, they intersected at a coordinate point, right? So we're looking for the value of b and for a that is true for both equations. So once I know the value of b, I can plug that value of b back into the equation to solve for a. However, in this case, a is already given to us. So we know b is 2 and a is equal to negative 2. So you're going to want to know the value for both of your variables. Um, all right, so on this example, ladies and gentlemen, now we're getting into systems of equations, which we dealt with last class period. And if you guys remember when we did systems of equations, remember there was kind of three, op three different results we had. We had, one, we had equations that intersected at a common point. We had uh, equations that graphed the same line. And then we had ones that were parallel. So, the main important thing that we're trying to do is we're trying to identify what are the x and the y coordinates where they intersect. So we were trying to solve for x and we're trying to solve for y. All right. So when doing these problems, what I like to do when doing substitution, based on what we remember from functions, right? what we just did, is always try to find, when you're doing the substitution process, which we're going to go over today, is always either um, always try to Get your variable um, that, with, that has a 1 or a negative 1 in front of it by itself. So in this case, you guys can see I have y is equal to 2x, right? Since y is equal to 2x, I know the value of y is equal to 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my first equation. And instead of plugging in y, I'm going to plug in what y is equal to, which is 2x. Does everybody see at least what I did? I replaced the y in the first equation with what it equals from the second equation, which is 2x. OK? Now, the reason why we did that is because now I have one equation with one variable. And we have solved equations that look like this. We can easily do this, right? One equation, one variable. I combine like terms. And then I solve for x. So now I know the value of x. But remember, when we're doing these problems, we're not only just trying to find the value of x, we're trying to find the value of y. So to find y, if I know x is equal to 2, and I want to find out what y is, 
Just like when we did this, just like it was this. You know, f of x equals 2x. Well, I want to know what the value of x, I want to know what the value of f of x is when x equals 2, right? This is the same thing. We're trying to find, I know the value of x is 2. So what is the value of y? So you say y is equal to 2 times 2. y is equal to 4. Therefore, the intersection point, Jill, is at the point 2 comma 4. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve this equation by using substitution. Now, again, remember when we're applying substitution, what we're doing is we're substituting the value of one variable and um, in for another, for that same variable in the other equation. So you can see both these equations have a y and an x, a y and an x, right? But I need to um, take, I can only solve an equation with one variable. I can't solve an equation when I have two variables. So I need to write an equation where there's in terms of only one variable. So what I'm going to do is notice that since y is equal to, right? That means the value of y is the same as the value of negative 4x plus 8. We don't know the value of y and 4x. That's what we're trying to determine. But we know that the value of y is the same as negative 4x plus 8. So to write an equation that only has x's, I'm going to say, well, you know what? Since these two values are the same, I'm going to take this value and put it in for y, because then I can write an equation that only has x's in it. And these two y's are the same. So I can write negative 4x plus 8 is equal to 2x minus 8. All I'm simply doing is taking this value and plugging it in for y. That's what we call substituting, substitution. Now I have an equation that I can solve for x. So to do that, I'll just add 4x, add 4x. Here I have to add 8, add 8. So therefore I have 16 equals 6x. Divide by 6, divide by 6. Now 6 doesn't evenly go into there, but um, x is equal to, goes in there 2 and a half times, so 2.5. Now, to simply solve for y, I just take this value and plug it into one of these equations. It doesn't matter which equation um, you plug it into because x is the same, but I think it would probably be easier for this equation. So I do at y equals 2 times 2.5 minus 5 y equals 2 times 2.5 is 5. That's minus 10. Word. Uh, 5 minus 10, y equals negative 5. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the solution set is x equals 2.5 and y equals negative 5 for the systems of equation by solving by substitution. Thanks. OK, um, what I want to do, guys, is I want to show you how to do this problem uh, using substitution. All right? So remember, ladies and gentlemen, when we're dealing with substitution, all we're simply doing is we're taking what, this, what the value of one variable is, I know it's an expression, and we're going to substitute it into the other equation. So the simplest way to look at this, Ivy, I already mentioned this. Talking to my grandpa. Ivy. Ivy. Grandpa, I see people look. Okay. <laughs> so when we're looking up here, ladies and gentlemen, when we're doing substitution, it's important and it's really helpful when you have a variable that's solved. Okay, so here you can determine on this top equation, I have a variable, or I'm sorry, I have y is solved. So then what I'm simply going to do is that is what I'm going to want to substitute into my second equation. So I have y equals 3x plus 8. So in this second equation, instead of writing y, I'm going to write in what my y represents, which is 3x plus 8. So therefore I have 5x plus 2 times 3x plus 8 equals 5. So you guys see what I did? All I did was I plugged in what my value of y was into my second equation. Now you can only do that when your variable is, is by itself solved for that value. All right. Now I put this in the box, but in reality, guys, all I really need you to do is just put in parentheses. Because remember, when we put in parentheses, that's telling us we're evaluating um, into our other equation. Well, now I need to simplify. So remember, whenever you have a parentheses and a number is right next to it, meaning multiplication, we need to do the straight up property. 5x plus 2 times 3x is 6x. And then 2 times 8 is going to be a positive 16 equals 5. Please, ladies and gentlemen, when you have two variables on the same side of an equal sign, do not try to subtract 5x, subtract 6x on both things. Just combine like terms. 5x plus 6x is... 11x. 
plus 16 equals 5. All right? Now this is a two-step equation. Going back to the beginning of the year, right? To solve this, I get my x by itself. I subtract 16 on both sides. I get 11x equals a negative 11. Divide by 11, and I get x equals a negative 1. All right? So we have x equals negative 1. We're almost done, right? Everybody's like, oh, yes, oh, I'm done. But then we said, oh, crap. Mr. McLogan said when we're solving a system, we think back to graphing. We said, oh, that system was where the two, two lines intersected, right? And we had an x and we had a y coordinate. So ladies and gentlemen, what we just found was the x coordinate. We need to figure out what is the y as well. So what I can do is now I know that x equals negative 1. So all you need to do is plug x into negative x. I'm sorry. All you need to do is plug negative 1 in for your x value. Now, you can plug it into either equation, but if you plug it into this one, you're going to have to solve for y again, which I don't really want to do. It's much easier just to plug it in for this one because y is already solved. So I'll say y equals 3 times negative 1 plus 8. Okay? Now I know that x equals negative 1 and y equals 5. I can either write my problem like that, or if I ask for the coordinate point, you can write it like that. Sway. Big sway. Yep. I got it? Yep. It is so much. Yeah, substitution. Yeah. So much. We need to use substitution. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, substitution, the reason why we do substitution is um, to substitute one expression in for the null expression when they are exactly the same. So the first thing we want to do, and the advantage of using substitution, is finding the value of one of your variables when its coefficient is 1 or negative 1. All right? And why is it easiest to solve for this x here? Because think about it. To solve for x, what do you have to do? All you have to do is subtract 3y. Right? However, to solve for any one of those variables, you have to subtract the other term, and then you have to do division. Right? x is the only one you don't have to undo multiplication or division because you already have 1 as a coefficient. So we're good. So when you're looking for substitution, only, only, always look for the variable that has a coefficient of 1 or negative 1 because it only, it only takes one operate to undo one operation to isolate your variable. So to solve, x plus 3y equals negative 3. Subtract 3y on both sides, and I get x equals negative 3y minus 3. So remember... Those are not exactly the same, right? X is not the same thing as negative 3y minus 3. However, the value is exactly the same, meaning we can substitute one value in for the other. Even though I know these don't look exactly the same, but their value is the same. So instead of using X, I can write negative 3y minus 3. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug it into the next equation. So if you solve for one variable in one equation, you're going to you substitute into the other equation. So what I do is I rewrite 4 times the negative 3y minus 3 plus 3y equals 6. Does anybody remember why I did that? Why do, why do we even need to substitute it in? Yes, Kelly? Exactly. See, if I say solve for x and y, you guys notice when I solve for x, y is in my answer, right? So I don't have a numeric solution. However, when you substitute, when you solve for one variable and then you substitute in that other, that expression in for that variable, I don't have any x's anymore, do I? So now I can solve for my equation x. So I use distributive property. So I get negative 12y minus 12 plus 3y equals 6. Combine like terms. So what that means now is the value of y is equal to negative 2. All right? So remember, when we were talking about solution points with graphing, that's the coordinate point. So if I know y equals negative 2, now I need to find the value of x. Now to do that, you can plug in the value of y into either one of these equations and solve for x. However, ladies and gentlemen, I spent all this time solving for x. So why don't we just plug in the value of y in for, or in, the value of y, in for y and just because we already have x solved, We'll get it right there. So I take x equals negative 3 times negative 2 minus 3. 
Negative 3 times negative 2 is a positive 6. 6 minus 3 is 2. So x equals 2. Now, since I'm writing these as x and y, I'm going to write them as a coordinate point, which will be 2 comma negative 2. Any questions on this? That is 3, isn't it? Is that what you're going to say? So we have x equals 3 comma negative 2. There we go. Any last questions? Good? Bad? Okay. Well done.